the book of Shemoth, otherwise known as the book of Exodus, chapter 7. Verse 1. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moshe, See, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, shall speak to Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Looking into the word harden, Hebrew word number 7185, Kashah. The Most High said he will Kashah Pharaoh's heart. Outline of biblical usage, to be hard, be severe, be fierce, be harsh, to be hard, to be difficult, to be hard, be severe, to be ill-treated, to be hard-pressed, to have severe labor of women, to make difficult, make difficulty, to make severe, make burdensome, to make hard, make stiff, be stubborn, of obstinacy, to show stubbornness. Okay, using the Hiffel definition, example one, to make hard. To harden the neck, i.e., to be obstinate, stubborn, to harden anyone's heart, to make him obstinate. And you see the Exodus example. To harden anyone's own heart. Second definition to make a yoke heavy, to make difficult. So let's explore the word heart. Using the Strong's Hebrew word 3823, just going straight to the primary root. Lavav, outline of biblical usage, to ravish, become intelligent, get a mind. To take heart, become enhearted, become intelligent, to ravish the heart, encourage, make heart beat faster. Jasenia's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, Nithal definition, to be deprived, to be void of heart, i.e. of mind, of understanding. But man is empty and void of understanding, and man is born like a wild ass's cult, signifying the imbecility and dullness of the human understanding when compared with the divine wisdom. Verse 3 again. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Verse 4. But Pharaoh will not hearken to you, that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt with great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh when I stretch forth my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moshe and Aaron did as Yahweh commanded them, so did they. And Moshe was fourscore years old and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. And Yahweh Elohim spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak to you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moshe and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did as Yahweh Elohim had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called his wise men, and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in the like manner with their enchantments. Looking up the word enchantments, Strong's Hebrew word 3858, Lahats. The biblical usage, flame of angelic sword. And where do we see another example of this? We see it in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. Looking into the Jacenius Hebrew child e lexicon. To hide, hence to use occult and magical arts, and hence meaning as a consequence for this reason, consequential. Second definition, flame, hence flaming steel of a sword. See Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Let's look into this verse 12. But Aaron's rods swallowed up their rods. What does that mean? So let's look up the word swallowed up. Strong's Hebrew word. 1104. Ba'la. Looking at the biblical usage. To swallow down. Swallow up. Engulf. Eat up. To swallow down. To swallow down. Engulf. To be swallowed up. To swallow. To swallow up. Engulf. Swandering. To be swallowed up. To be ended. Read in verse 13, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he being the most high, that he hearkened not to them, as Yahweh Elohim has said. Verses 8 through 13, Moses and Aaron received divine foreknowledge from the most high that he's going to destroy the idols or the gods, their wisdom, i.e. by swallowing their serpents. The rods and the serpents are just symbols or visuals. Case in point, 
Pharaoh did not have the heart to mine Moses and Aaron. So let's just see what these rods were. The wasp scepter is a symbol that appears often in relics, art, and hieroglyphics associated with the ancient Egyptian religion. It appears as a stylized animal head at the top of a long, straight shaft with a forked end. Wasp scepters were used as symbols of power and dominion and were associated with ancient Egyptian deities such as Set or Anubis, as well as with the pharaoh. Wasp scepters also represent the Set animal. In later use, it was a symbol of control over the force of chaos that Set represented. In a funerary context, the wasp scepter was responsible for the well-being of the deceased and was thus sometimes included in the tomb equipment or in the decoration of the tomb or coffin. The scepter is also considered an amulet. The Egyptians perceived the sky as being supported on four pillars, which could have the shape of the wasp. The scepter was also the symbol of the fourth upper Egyptian gnome, the gnome of Thebes. Wasp scepters were depicted as being carried by idols, pharaohs, and priests. They commonly occurred in paintings, drawings, and carvings of idols, and often parallel with emblems such as the Ankh and the Djade pillar. Remnants of real wasp scepters have been found. They are constructed of faience or wood, where the head and the forked tail of the set animal are visible. The earliest examples date to the first dynasty. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moshe, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refused to let the people go. Get you to Pharaoh in the morning. Look, he goeth out to the water, and you shall stand by the river's brink, against he come. And the rod, which was turned to a serpent, shall you take in your hand. And you shall say to him, Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews have sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, Hitherto you would not hear. This said Yahweh Elohim, and this shall you know that I am Yahweh. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in your hand on the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. Looking up the word stink, Strong's Hebrew word 887, Baash. Outline of biblical usage, to have a bad smell, stink, smell bad, to stink, smell bad, to become odious, to make oneself odious, to stink, emit a stinking odor, to cause to stink, of wickedness, to make oneself odious, to abhor. Nifal definition, the metaphor, to become hateful, odious, the Hifal definition, metaphor, to make hateful, odious. You have made our savior to be abhorred, i.e., have made us to be hated. And the third definition, to act wickedly. And Yahweh Elohim spake to Moshe, Say to Aaron, Take your rod, and stretch out your hand on the waters of Egypt, on the streams, on their rivers, and on their ponds, and on all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and vessels of stone. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken to them. As Yahweh Elohim had said, and Pharaoh turned and went to his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, and they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled, after that Yahweh Elohim had smitten the river.